So I'm now going to talk about the Galois correspondence for covering spaces. So I'm going to be putting together a load of stuff we've already seen and call the whole package the Galois correspondence. So first thing, we've seen that a covering space y of x together with a base point little y in the preimage of little x gives rise to a subgroup which I've been calling p star pi 1 y based at y inside the fundamental group of x based at x. Moreover, we've just seen that provided there exists a universal cover, every subgroup arises this way. So for every covering space there's a subgroup, for every subgroup there's a covering space. It's the first fact that feeds into this Galois correspondence. It's a correspondence between covering spaces and subgroups of the fundamental group. The great thing is properties of the covering space can just be read off if you know enough about the subgroup. So second, we have this formula that um, if beta is some homotopy class of loops in X, and we conjugate p star pi 1 y based at y by beta, what we get is p star pi 1 y based at a different point, based at sigma beta of y. So remember, sigma beta is the monodromy around beta. So you take y, you move it around the loop beta, and you get to sigma beta y. And the claim is that the conjugate of p star pi 1 y based at y by beta is p star pi 1 y based at sigma beta y. This tells us two things. First off, it tells us that conjugates of subgroups are represented by the same covering space, just with a different base point. Conversely, if y is a connected covering space, and we have two points y and y prime in the preimage of x. We can pick a path between them, if we're assuming it's path connected, and that projects down to give a loop beta in x. And we see that, well, y prime is sigma beta of y. by definition of the monodromy, and hence p star pi 1 y based at y prime is just a conjugate of p star pi 1 y based at y. So the covering space itself specifies for us a whole conjugacy class of subgroups, just coming from picking different base points. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing, the third thing, tells us when we have covering transformations. So remember that there's a covering transformation from y1 to y2, let's call it f, sending little y1 to little y2, if and only if the subgroup associated to y1 based at little y1 is a subgroup of the subgroup associated to y2 based at little y2. So remember both of these guys, p1 star pi1 y1 based at y1, and p2 star pi1 y2 based at y2 are subgroups of pi1 x based at x. So the covering spaces are related by a covering transformation if and only if the subgroups are related by inclusion. So I'm just going to move this out of the way for a minute and draw a picture So here is um, y, x, rather, and suppose we've got a couple of covering spaces, y1, y2, y3, and covering transformations like this, covering maps. Remember, a covering transformation is in particular a covering map. 
Okay, so um, number one above tells us that each Y gives us a subgroup. So let's call the subgroup H just for convenience. All right, so each um, each Y is going to give us a subgroup. H3, H1, H2. X is going to correspond to just pi 1X. And point 3 is saying these covering transformations happen if and only if there are inclusions of these subgroups. In other words, H3 is a subgroup of H1, is a subgroup of pi 1, H2 is a subgroup of pi 1, H3 is a subgroup of H2, etc. So the Galois correspondence is really telling us not just that we can associate to a covering space a subgroup and to a subgroup a covering space, but it's telling us that that assignment preserves this lattice of maps. On the one side, covering transformations and covering maps, and on the other side, inclusions. The final fantastic fact is number four down here, which says if we take this subgroup p star pi 1 y y and call it h, then we can actually compute the deck group of y, in other words the group of covering transformations from y to itself, as being this quotient, which is the normalizer of h in pi 1 x divided by h. So the quotient pi 1 x over h doesn't make sense unless h is a normal subgroup. So instead we take the largest subgroup of pi 1 x in which h is normal, that's this normalizer, and then take the quotient because then it makes sense. If you've ever seen any Galois theory of field extensions, which is what people usually think of as Galois theory, this should be very reminiscent of the properties of Galois groups. So we've now established the Galois correspondence for covering spaces. For every covering space, there's a subgroup of pi 1. For every subgroup of pi 1, there's a covering space. For every covering transformation, we have an inclusion of the corresponding subgroups and vice versa. If the subgroups include, there's a covering transformation. So the correspondence between geometry on one side and algebra on the other side is complete. So let's just think for a second about some examples of this. So uh, let's get rid of this schematic picture and let's draw an actual picture. So let's take x to be the circle. So the fundamental group is Z. What are the subgroups of Z? Well, there's the trivial group, which I'm going to write as 0, because 0 is the identity in, in Z. And the corresponding covering space is the real line. What other subgroups are there? Well, for any integer n, there is the subgroup of uh, integers that are divisible by n. So, for example, there are the even integers. There's the integers divisible by 3, integers divisible by 4, integers divisible by 5, etc. They're all subgroups of Z. And some of them are subgroups of each other, so the integers divisible by 4 are in particular divisible by 2, so we have an inclusion here. There's no relation between the integers divisible by 3 and by 2, but there is another subgroup, the integers divisible by 6, which sits inside both of them. And inside all of these subgroups we have the trivial group. etc. Okay, so there should be infinitely many subgroups and infinitely many arrows, so I'll just put a dot 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 everywhere to indicate there's lots and lots of subgroups and the inclusions correspond to divisibility.
Okay, on the geometry side, we have the double cover of the circle by the circle. That corresponds to the subgroup of even integers. We have the triple cover. We have a fourfold cover. And for every integer, we have a cover that winds that number of times. That's five, isn't it? Yep. It's supposed to be six. So that has a map down to two, and a map down to three, map down to the base. And so we really get, for each integer n, on the one hand, a subgroup n, z, n integers divisible by n, and on the other side we get the covering map e to the i theta goes to e to the i n theta. As well as covers from the universal cover down to everything. A more interesting example Let's uh, move all this stuff out of the way. Let's take x to be the wedge of two circles. We've seen many examples of covering spaces corresponding to subgroups, in this case, of z star z, the free group on two generators a and b. And if I give you a subgroup, you should be able to write down a covering space. So let's have a go. For a start, the universal cover was this infinite trivalent, sorry, infinite four-valent graph, where all of the, sorry, I can't really draw it very well on this, all of the um, horizontal things are labelled with arrows, like this, and all the verticals are labelled with double arrows. So this is the uh, universal cover of the figure eight. So this corresponds to the subgroup 1, trivial group. And what happens if I give you a subgroup like um, A? Right, this is a group, subgroup with a single generator and no relations. What would the corresponding covering space look like? Well, it's got to have the homotopy type of a circle, because its fundamental group is z and it's a graph, and we know that it's got a loop that projects down to the loop a in the base, so I'm going to guess that looks like this. And then out of this vertex there have to become two more edges, which are double arrow edges, like this. And I'm not allowed to add any more loops in the diagram, so all I'm going to do is just extend these with these kind of four valent cross ends, these infinite four valent trees, to get a covering space. And that is a covering space. Its fundamental group is precisely Z, just generated by this loop that maps down to A. So this has to be the covering space corresponding to this subgroup. Let's think of another subgroup. Let me instead take the subgroup normally generated by A. In other words, it's generated by A and all its conjugates. I don't have any particularly good notation for this, so let me just call it uh, like norm A or something. This is the subgroup generated by A and all its conjugates. It's a normal subgroup. In particular, as it's a normal subgroup, the corresponding covering space should have many symmetries. How many? That is to say, the deck group of the cover should be z star z divided by norm a. That is a group with two generators a and b, 
and one relation, A equals the identity. In other words, it's the group generated by B, that is Z. So we're looking for a covering space whose deck group is the integers and which has a loop that projects to A and also you know it should have infinitely many other loops we obtain by applying Z, you know, applying the deck transformations to that loop. So here's a guess This is a covering space, it just continues infinitely on in each direction. And you can see that its elements, the elements of P star pi 1 of this subgroup, uh, of this cover, are precisely A, B, A, B inverse, B squared, A, B inverse, B inverse. In other words, they're the conjugates of A. We can see this is a normal cover, in other words, the deck group Z acts transitively on the four valent vertices. Therefore, it does correspond to a normal subgroup, and it's a normal subgroup which contains A. So certainly the, the subgroup corresponding to this cover is contained, sorry, contains norm A. But in fact, it's easy to see that it's equal to norm A, because any element in the subgroup is generated by a combination of these loops. And these loops each project down to a conjugate of A. So in other words, pi 1 of this cover maps down to something generated by the conjugates of A. And that's certainly contained in norm A. So this must be the cover corresponding to this subgroup, norm A. Now, we are told by the Galois correspondence there is an inclusion on this side. Right, the subgroup generated by A is contained in the subgroup normally generated by A. We just have to add more generators in. Therefore, there should be a covering map from this cover. It looks a little bit sort of a bit like a psychedelic reindeer with these two antlers coming out down to this cover. And with a bit of imagination you can see this, so let's start by saying this red circle here is going to project one to one down to this red circle here. This edge is going to come from this edge. This edge is going to go to this edge. I'm going to run out of colours pretty soon, so I'll move to red again. This edge is going to go to this edge, and so is this edge, except backwards around it. And similarly, this this whole vertical bar here is going to wrap infinitely often around this circle. Then if you go up one more, you're going to go along here, and then if you move along vertical bar like this, that's going to wrap infinitely often around the next circle, etc. So that's how you'd kind of construct this covering map that Galois theory is telling you is there, corresponding to this inclusion. Now, the subgroups of the free group on two generators are incredibly complicated any free group sits inside that group. So the covering theory is correspondingly incredibly complicated. We've seen a couple examples here of uh, covering spaces that are you know, slightly horrible, they're sort of infinite covering spaces, and there are many, many more where that came from. So the most important question I haven't yet addressed is when is there a universal cover, a simply connected covering space? The answer is for any reasonably nice space X, so for example a cell complex 
or any of the spaces we've met in this course, there is a universal cover. But the construction of the universal cover is a story for another video.